In this video, we're going to be looking at the Kling AI video creator, and I'm going to be making a series of videos where I dive deep into this creator because after researching it some more, and I've got a very nice discount on this. Thank you to Kling AI and uh, Black Friday. And in this introduction video, we're going to be looking at it as an overview and an introduction video into what it is capable of doing. Now, if you're intrigued to see what Kling 1.0 was like, go and watch my old video where I also compared that to another AI video generator. And that will give you a good idea idea of what it was able to produce at the 1.0 level but with this predominantly I'm going to be looking at the 1.5 model because I want to look at the best model so now that we're on the website here quick one for you at the point of filming this video this is their offer and I've just checked it out they still have the Black Friday mega sale which is the one that I got hence why I'm making this series of videos about it but if you're intrigued to see it then all you have to do is go here to this part of the website and sign up there is a basic one or a free one where in my previous video I showed you about this this is where you will get I believe a certain amount of credit a day so technically it is always free and when i made it before in that video i think it was using six or ten credits to create a video every time so again you effectively you've got 66 you get six video creations a day as we scroll down now you can see straight away ai images ai videos and they have an ai i don't know video editor coming at some point soon but we are going to focus mainly on ai videos here we'll have a little look at ai images but again that will be looked at in a separate video so we are going to go Go to AI videos and then here first off you have text to video and then you have image to video and we're going to have a look at both as we scroll through now this is where you put your prompt you can play around with a face reference where you can put in a trained face also something I'm going to look at at a later date the settings here is creativity and relevance when you turn up the relevance that's how much you want it to follow exactly what you put in the prompt and if you put it down towards the other way then the more creative the AI will be with your prompt instead of following it directly straight and then you have two modes you have standard mode and professional mode because we're in Kling 1.5 and this is where you would change it to Kling 1.0 or 1.5 this is again where you put it in the standard mode or the professional mode but in Kling 1.5 it only supports the professional mode and then as you go down you can have a duration of five seconds 10 seconds and then you have your aspect ratio of wide and you can see it's 1080p portrait or square one by one whatever you like to call it as you come down the generating counts that means how many videos or images do you want created from your prompt so it's one or make one result from your prompt if you want two three four then it will do more but the more you put that up the more it will cost you in credits and then you have your camera movement and this basically allows you to how do you want the camera to move do you want it to you know pan in pan out do different movements you have that much sort of ability to affect it as well which i really like and then with a negative prompt this is where you'd put in you know you don't want more thing any weird grainy parts bad quality just anything you don't want to see in the final generation so i've got a mixture of prompts that we're going to play around with and a mixture of ai image to video just to show you quickly first one we have visualize a day in the life of a superhero who has silly powers like turning objects into pancakes let's make the relevance a little bit up 6.5 we're going to make it at five seconds and let's put it at a portrait screen so yeah i'm happy with that and then also because we're in the 1.5 mode the camera movement is disabled as well for now maybe they'll bring that in in the future but uh, we'll have a look at it and the negative prompts let's just put in more thing grainy ugly and this figured there we go let's stick with that and we're going to press generate and see what we get and i have to say results wise i'm actually really impressed by it i think you know the detail attention to detail in the buildings the background yeah there's a little bit of morphing in the background here and there but as an overall detail on the character himself centered i like the fact he, you know he's doing i don't know what he's doing there doing that getting it playing around with it I, I like it it's funny it's funky a little bit for sure but has potential and i like the detail of it so there we go there's the first one visualize a mystical forest where every step creates glowing flowers so sounds interesting different like why not but with this one let's have a look at cling 1.0 because i actually want to play around with the camera on this one a little bit and again you have the difference with the standard mode and the professional mode so if we do just click that see the credits goes down quite a lot to 10 credits but again i want to use the best version so the professional mode and we're going to keep it at five seconds this is where we can play around what the camera actually does so if we click here you can see we have different versions of how you know we want the camera to do vertical zoom pan 
tilt, roll, anything like that. With this one, let's do a pan. And then, I mean, we can play around then with the tolerance of it. So what, how much do we want it to go? So as we see it move, you can see it does like that or anything like that. And what I want to show you quickly is just here where you see the blue line. The blue line is your final shot. So in other words, where you see the gray area here, that is your starting frame. The blue part here is your finished frame. So where is it going to end up? So for example, I don't know. Let's go like 1.8 like that and see what it does. Now, I don't really think it's incorporate the steps so far because there's no one actually walking. So it doesn't have to actually say that or not to some extent. But to actually look at the shot as a whole, obviously it's 720p, not 1080. So you can tell that difference. But again, you can upscale it. I actually think this looks really, really impressive. I do really like it. The camera panning as it goes through, very consistent, very smooth. And again, when you try this on other video, AI video creators, you know, you can get that morphing, warping, weird inconsistencies in the AI sort of stuff. But this is really nice. I am very impressed with this. So yeah, really nice. And even the detail, I think this would look good upscaled. So yeah, really impressed by this. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. <laughs> now this one, depict a race between flying cars for a neon lit futuristic cityscape. Sounds quite interesting. Let's go 0. 0.15, 15, 0. 0.15, 0. 0.15. And we're gonna keep it in professional mode because we only have that option. Five seconds and we're gonna make it widescreen still. Again, I actually do really like it. A little bit of morphing together there, which is just funky and strange. But the first few seconds, couple of seconds, really nice at the background, very consistent within reason. Yeah, I like it. Just the morphing there is a little bit weird. So it hasn't got that separation, you know, sort of spot on yet. But the details and the overall quality of the image, I really do like. So again, pretty nice. Now we're going to go back over to AI videos. And again, now transition over to image to video. So there we go. Now this is where you take your lovely AI images and you upload them and uh, see what you get from them. So this is one they actually made before actually recording this video. And this was made with Darth Vader, but Darth Vader, I actually made the AI image on Kling and it gave a very nice result. Then I just took it over to make an AI image. And this is one cool thing you can do as well. If you have two separate images that you've gener generated, but they look the same, give or take, you can make one as a starting point and then have another one as an ending point or an end frame. I think it is very consistent. Tiny little bit of morphing with the hand there, but as an overall, really very, very good image and consistent. So pretty much most is the same. If you go through this way, you put your image, then you put your prompts or what you want the image to do or what's it displaying, what's going on. You can draw a motion brush, you can control the movement of objects. Same with the creativity relevant slider that hasn't changed. Then you have the mode again is the same duration is five or 10 seconds. Generation count, so how many do you want it to make of the image of the video? So my first image is Pikachu being a DJ on a beach because I think that's very, very nice. And we can just say depict the DJ having a good time. Motion brush, I'm not gonna play around with that now because I wanna make a separate video about this. Creativity, we can put it down a little bit to creativity, 0.25, I'm happy with that. Professional mode, five seconds. Now the camera movement, let's have a nice zoom and let's have a look how this goes. So again, the gray one, if I go in like this, this is our starting frame, the one here. The blue one is our end frame. So we can have it go out a little bit. Let's do that. Yeah, 3.1 and no negative prompts. Let's just put in morphing, grainy, and we'll just stick with that. That tends to be good. 10 minutes. So there we go, because we're using the 1.5 model. Okay, for the next one, we're gonna do Kling 1.0. And on this one, we are gonna use an image of Daffy Duck. Now, these images, I should say as well, I actually generated using Grok because I like the Flux model that it uses. I just find it very easy and it makes very good images. So here we have Daffy Duck and he is moonwalking there wearing Ray-Bans. So there we go. Let's just put in moonwalking and see what we get. Moonwalking and good vibes there we go moonwalking good vibes and let the ai play around with that we're going to leave the motion brush um and let's just leave the creativity relevant slider in the middle so it's the best of both worlds generation count is one negative prompts morphing ugly and grainy and then we're going to generate and let's see what we get now there's a famous video of will smith 
eating pasta, you know, consuming pasta. And when that came out, I think about a year and a bit ago now, that was the benchmark for AI video. Of course, since then, we have come very, very, very far away in terms of AI video capabilities and generation as a whole. So we are going to use an image of Ed Will Smith eating pasta because I only feel it's the right thing to do, of course. So here we go. Beautiful Will Smith eating pasta. And we're literally going to put in Will Smith eating pasta. No more than that. This is in the 1.5 as well version of Kling. We're going to leave it as um, 0.65 in the relevance. So it listens to it a little bit more. Five seconds. Camera movement. I'm not actually going to add any weird, any strange camera movement to it. We'll leave it as it is. This is Pikachu. And this is Pikachu having a good time as a DJ on a tropical looking beach this looks very nice the movement and it just even the animated bits i mean his mouth is a tiny little bit funky in places the tongue a little bit but as an overall i i, I like it just the moving around okay the the microphone floating there a little bit but as a whole really nice so the next one now is donald duck doing the moonwalk now this is made in cling 1.0 and you can just see i put in moonwalk and good vibes and it's okay I, I don't think it's great it's just a bit weird and disfigured and strange and the weird morphing then the third one now this i have to say i'm the most impressed with because this is will smith eating the pasta i'm really impressed just again looks very realistic very human he doesn't morph too much of his face as well it looks consistent and um, yeah this is really incredible even the pasta coming from there so overall that is the quick overview of what Kling 1.5 can do and Kling 1.0 as well the older version but Kling AI video generator as a whole I think it is incredible and I am actually really excited to be making these series of videos about it now because also I'm going to be learning about it more myself understanding what we can what you can't do what is capable of and how can you sort of push its boundaries in different ways which is why I'm really intrigued about it I, I believe this is still my favorite one that I have played around with and I'm just looking forward to using it more great consistency I like the manual controls that you have I also like the way that AI interprets the data interprets the commands it makes it overall consistent and I like the 1.5 update with the 1080p video generation it looks very sharp really good very professional I think it's great so I'd say sign up for it use the free version play around with it and at the point of watching this video if you get access to the Black Friday deal as well and you have you know you want to play around with and you have the intrigue to do it i think it is a great deal and i don't think you have anything to lose so i'm looking forward to making more of these videos stay tuned let me know in the comments down below what you think what you uh, you know what you think of the ai consistency and what is generated and also what you've got in your own results as well thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video